What's good, everybody? The pod is back. It's your commissioner, a Flo, coming to you live in prime time from Cupertino, California. Wait a minute. We live. We prime time. And we 2 and oh. Shout out to all my 2 and no managers out there. You know who you are. Today, I'm joined by my co-host, who also knows a little bit about being 2 and oh. Victor, mm-hmm. better late than never, my friend. Better late hey. than never. You know what they say about people at 2 and 0? It's because they've been champions before. Oh, you know? Wow. Is that what they say? Well, I mean, I, I'm a two time champ in my home league. Uh, some people, uh, they, they might be a little old, long in the tooth, but some people say you're also a two time champ. Oh, I, I, I was the two time champ back in before, the, back champ. in the, back in the res- Renaissance age of, of our, of our league. Well, it's a new age, and there's going to be, or could be, a new champ this year, or it could be a repeat offender. We will see. But we got a lot to get to today. Let's get started with that. So we're just going to briskly kind of go through, uh, thanks to the feedback we got from you guys last time, uh, some of the waivers and some of the moves that have been made around the league. So let's start with that. We'll start with the big waiver edition of the week, and that is Nicole's team adding Tua for $75 of fab money. Victor, what you think about that move? I know you had some skin in that game. You didn't end up putting any bids. So uh, what do you think? I think, you know, the more I think about it, it, even before I talk about Tua, it really hurts. Jalen hurts if I just had him on my team. I would not be in the market for a quarterback. But Tua was one of the guys that I was looking at. But to me, it's like, yes, it's a great offense. Um, it looks like everything's clicking, but it's Tua. You, you, you take the lows with the highs. His floor is, is, is better than what Russell Wilson is doing. But, hey, Nicole had to pay $75. Uh, I'll give it to her. She has been emptying the bank uh, on her fab money. So I'll give it kudos to her. Um, and Hector, you know, he also had a bid for 25 To me, that was more uh, – more in the in the ballpark if I was to put him for Tua. Um, yeah. He ended up getting Mariota with $11. Uh, like it says, no other bids. And and finally, with me, Kirk Cousins, uh, $27. I said, you know what? I have Jefferson. They did got play the Kirk. Eagles. They, got, they play the Eagles. The Eagles look really good. And it's on Monday night. Kirk Cousins has never won a game on Monday night. I was like, all right, I'll give him a shot. So we'll see what happens. But I think out of the waivers – Probably Nicole took it with a $75 bid on Tua. Yeah, and I think Kirk now has two wins on Monday night, but definitely not last Monday night because that was awful. But, yeah, I mean, I I get where you're coming from. That Kirk uh, Jefferson stack could come in clutch as long as you stream it right. And I saw that you got a couple other quarterbacks, which we'll probably talk about later. And I think your your end goal is to kind of pick and choose your battles and places. Absolutely. Uh, Speaking of battles – you're going down this week, thanks to Sun Tzu, the art of war. Thank you. You have zero chance, zero chance, zero chance this week, Victor. But let's keep on moving. We'll talk about our game of the week a little bit later. We have some time set aside for that. Let's talk a little bit about trades, Victor. So trade one is between myself and my younger, less experienced, lesser fantasy player brother, David. Uh, so the trade was Allen Robinson and Michael Carter for Chris Godwin. We're only talking about this now because of the Byron rule and it didn't <laughs> didn't register, didn't go through until right. Monday. So we already talked about it in the group chat, so let's quickly go over this one. What do you think about it, Victor? I think and Cur- it was David who got Godwin, right? And you got Allen Robinson. Put yeah. the damn book down. <laughs> Nobody cares about the book. I, I uh, Robinson and Michael Carter. Yeah, I so I think uh, short term, it might play uh, more on, in your favor, but I think David did get the better player, assuming that Chris Godwin is healthy coming back from his hamstring uh, injury that he had. Uh, he, do, he is coming off an ACL injury that he had last season. So there's a lot of question marks around Chris Godwin, but – if Allen Robinson can get a little bit more acclimated with that offense, um, Matthew Stafford sees somebody else other than Cooper Cup in that offense, then it would work 
in your favor, but for now, I probably would say uh, it's in favor of David. But again, we we have to wait and see what happens in the coming yeah. weeks. Yeah, I mean, I could probably get behind that. Uh, I really did it because I thought I was going to lose Nicole and be one and one, and I, depending on the matchup, could have even started zero and two. So I would say I rushed the move a little bit. I could, I would probably do the trade over again if David is interested. Because uh, I would take Godwin now that I'm 2-0. and oh, Even if I lose the next game 2-2, two and two, by the time Godwin comes back, I'll be ready to roll. Mm-hmm. But for now, I have two assets. I'll see what I can do with them. Uh, hopefully, Allen Robinson pays off for me. So now, trade number two, David again. Man, David, David, David. Same busy. David and Fajardo, quick trade here. Julio Jones for Elijah Moore, wide receiver for wide receiver swap. Who do you think got the better of that deal, Victor? T- uh, definitely David. I don't know what the hell Fajardo is <laughs> doing. Julio Jones is out again. He's not going to play this week. At least no. that's how it, signs are pointing that he's not going to play. So Elijah Moore, yes, right now um, the big star is um, blanking on the guy's name right now. Uh, the rookie. Uh, um, Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson. Garrett that's Wilson. my guy. Garrett Wilson, yes. baby, rookie of the year. I, I think uh, Garrett Wilson is the guy to own in that Jets offense. But once um, once, once Joe Flacco is out of the, out of the picture – I know Elijah Elijah Moore can play a bigger factor in that offense. So I think long-term, David wins this trade. Short-term, I get Fajardo why he traded for uh, Julio Jones because he probably thinks, hey, I need to start winning some games here. But it kind of bit him in the ass because Julio Jones is not going to play. So the trade was, in my opinion, it's all it, – it really helped David and it, it really it, it fucked up Fajardo's team even more. So. Yeah, Elijah Moore was a player that I had my eye on, hoping that Fajardo would devalue him so I could swoop in and trade for him. Um, I tried. Unfortunately, none of my deaf players have the notoriety yet to make the trade, but I do think my deaf players are going to go off and people are going to be more interested in them as we go along. But Fajardo didn't want to make a move. I think Elijah Moore is going to have a breakout game, and after that he's going to be kind of untradeable, especially for uh, Julio Jones type. He'll actually have to give out actual assets to get him back. But we've, we've been waiting for the breakout for a while. He had a stretch before getting injured last year. We'll see if that breakout ever comes. Uh, it's still the Jets after all, and who knows if Zach Wilson will be an upgrade to Joe Flacco. I think so, and I, I know you probably think so too, Vic, but that is yet to be seen. So let's move on to trade number three. And, man, the repeat offender again, David and Augie. That trade was very interesting, and we talked a little bit about it in the group chat. Tyler Lockett and Miles Sanders to Augustine and A.J. Dillon and Tyler Boyd to Davis. Victor, what do you think about it? Uh, I think uh, I love Augustine, Mr. Prado. The guy, just a stand-up guy, but Tyler Lockett, I understand because he had a great game last week, but I think it was more of a let's sell high on Tyler Lockett. I don't think if it's it's going to be very inconsistent as a lot of I had a lot of members of the group said that, hey, I don't know if Lockett was the move. Miles Sanders, I understand. Probably what Aggie was thinking was, I mean, I have A.J. Dillon. I kind of don't understand what's going on with the Packers' um, backfield. I wouldn't have traded A.J. Dillon because I value him more than Aaron Jones. That's just my Ooh. personal opinion. But, uh, but Aggie said, I don't want the headache. I don't want to deal with it. So he ended up going with uh, – Miles Sanders, who it is a safer bet that he is going to get more production out of that Eagles backfield. But uh, I think, again, David, I think David did a good good enough job to kind of move off from Miles Sanders and Tyler Lockett, and he got a good uh, – at least a, a flex, strong flex, if not RB, RB3 in A.J. Dillon. No, I totally hear you on that, Vic. Uh, A.J. Dillon, I thought, is the prize of all four of those players. Um, Tyler Boyd. Doesn't move the needle for me. Tyler mm-hmm. Lockett is always going to be exactly what he always is, and that's going to be he's he's going to get you twenty to thirty points on that God given Sunday, and then he's going to give you four to maybe eight if you're lucky points on some of the other ones, and it's going to be scattered and almost impossible to predict. Uh, mm-hmm. So players like that, they've been around in fantasy forever. Deshaun Jackson comes to mind. Uh, Right. What are some other ones? What was that guy? Darius Hayward Bay comes to mind. Uh, players like that, they're going to score points in bunches. And at the end of the year, which is kind of all that matters, 
uh, their point scored is going to look good, but it could come down and bite you uh, over the course of the season playing them too right. often. So you got to kind of pick your spots with Tyler Lockett. Miles Sanders, I think, is a good get. Um, I yeah, I think overall Augie did the right move and he he made his team better. Uh, and David, being that a lot of the Tyler Lockett, Miles Sanders is either a flex two or death. He ended up getting AJ Dillon, which uh, as a Aaron Jones owner, I value a lot too. So I think uh, I would say Augie wins right now. A- AJ Dillon could end up being the seal on winning the trade overall for David in the end. Yeah, to me, that's that's what I want to clarify. It's like it probably the trade probably helps Aggie, but the best player. I always want to trade for the best player. Yeah, and David got I agree. the best player. So, yeah, and I think it depends on your team build too. But I think right. both of these guys are two guys that know what they're doing. So that's why the trade kind of makes sense, and that's why people are split on it because you can kind of see what both of these guys are doing. And I love a good trade like that, man. Sometimes it's not about winning and losing; it's just making your team build better. So shout out to David Nagy. Good trade. Love interesting trades. Keep them coming. Maybe not from David, though. You already have six trades, Victor. He p- paces the league with six. What do you think? Um, I mean, um, I have an inside source uh, close enough to the situation of David's camp that's telling me that the guy said, you know, I'm going to stay put now. I'm not trading anymore. But <laughs> David David has an addiction problem like I do. What do you call David? it? The urge. Huh? The urge. You got to have the urge. The urge. <laughs> um, but David said he's good on on you know making those six trades. He thinks he's okay. Um, I'm sure he's going to make a couple more. I I keep telling him don't trade. You have a solid team, um, yes. but sometimes the temptation's too too much. You know you fall for it. So hopefully David learns his lessons and just leaves it where he's at. But I I I doubt that's going to happen. So. Yeah, I doubt so too. ESPN currently has him ranked as number one, but he's going to tinker, tinker, tinker away until he's happy with what he sees in front of him. And hopefully that is a winning playoff team. Thanks for that, Victor. That was great stuff. We have a new segment to present this week. Uh, I realized that uh, some of these are obvious, but I just wanted to start giving out weekly awards in the podcast. Because, uh, you know, sometimes people ha- do great things and it deserves highlights. And sometimes people do really stupid things and they also deserve to be highlighted for the wrong reason. So weekly awards is going to be too good, too bad. It's going to be the four same categories. And if anybody has any suggestions to add them, we'll add them as they come. But obviously the first one is pretty obvious. It's the highest score award. We have a $10 bonus. Cha-ching for that going this year. So, Hector, you are the highest scorer. Let's give it a round of applause for Hector Victor. You no, were almost there. No. You were almost there. Second Hector, fucking week. <laughs> 173 points scored. Wow, man. Congrats on the 10 bucks and congrats on the highest score award. Uh, Victor, I think you came in second or third. Yeah, it's uh I've I've been I've been up there for the last two weeks, but I haven't been able to get the the, the 10 bucks. So yeah, you'll you'll have to you'll have to be more efficient and we'll get a little uh, into that a little later. Uh, lowest score award, another obvious one, but we still got to give it Christian Fajardo. Christian Hugo Fajardo. Yeah. Keep racking those up, buddy. Puntos. Keep pasta, racking them up. Uh, are you going to make Fajardo pay for those $10? Bro, I think that should have been the thing. But you know what? That guy's not going to pay. He hasn't even paid up his... Uh, his toilet bowl punishment. There's no way he's going to pay $10. Get out of here. He barely pays dues. Fajardo, you are this week's lowest score. Do better. Uh, next one is going to be manager of the week. And then this one is based on a few categories, but mostly it's least points left on the bench. The most efficient, uh, the manager that doesn't make mistakes, they get the most out of their team. They squeeze every point that they can. And two days, this week's manager of the week is the one and only Brian Newark. Brian, congratulations. You only left three points on the bench, and they were from a tight end. So I think Dawson Knox scored eight, and Brian's starting tight end, which I, I'm, I'm forgetting, but his starting tight end only scored five. Other than that, every play that Brian made uh, was the highest score that he could have played. Uh, so – we go through everybody. Me, I had 30 points from Garrett Wilson on the bench. Uh, other people had some other higher scores on the bench. 
Not Brian. Only those three points, like I said, and because of that, he's manager of the week. Victor, what do you what do you think? Man, I just I just don't get this guy. He's got a kid. <laughs> he has a terrible sleeping schedule, but he still managed to be the manager of the week. And kudos yeah. to the guy. Kudos to the guy because man, I I, w- I would be checked out. But hey, his team he's his team is on the up and up. So hopefully he can get over five hundred this week. Yeah, and the player that he played was TJ Hawkinson over Dawson Knox. And you can't even blame him for making that play. I think everybody would have started Hawkinson, but Knox just ended up getting eight versus Hawkinson's five. Good job, Brian. You are the manager of the week. Now for the last one and my personal favorite, because it means you suck at your job. Mr. (laughs) Inefficient, Paul M. Koger. Sorry to do this to you, buddy. You did win. So hold on to that win as tight as you can because you had 25 points by Amari Cooper on the bench. And then you had 17 points by John Dotson on the bench. Those boats should have been flexes. I know they had a rough week one, or at least Cooper did. Um, But man, you would have a lot more points for right now. And you would probably be higher in the power rankings right now if you just played those two points. Because of that inefficiency, even though you won, you are this week's Mr. Inefficient Victor. I mean, you got to give it to the guy. Yeah, he was inefficient. But, hey, he lost Dak, and he still won the game. I think he, he he doesn't care if he's Mr. Inefficient. As long as, <laughs> he as, as, long as he's 2-0, and o, baby, that's all he cares about. He does not care at all. You are right. That is one guy that could give a shit about the Mr. Inefficient Award. Paul? You are going to be more efficient this week. You're already starting off right with Amari Cooper on Thursday Night Football. He went off. Congrats on that touchdown, and good luck versus Hector. And speaking of which, the next segment will be our rankings. But before we start, we'll go ahead and do a uh, game prediction because this game prediction didn't make it during the rankings. So let's start with that, Victor, if you could get your app out and take a look at what we're looking at with the uh with the game Kevin and here. Nicole yeah Kevin the, the, and Nicole yep yeah the fir- the first one we have here um obviously it, this is uncharted territory to see Nicole down 0 and 2 to start the year Nicole has a solid team yeah she was hit by you know one of the best probably one of the best fantasy players of all time in week 1 and then she backs it up and has to face the commish Oh, and two, it's respectable. We are two of the best teams. I get it. Um, but uh, Nicole has been unlucky uh, for, to start the year. Yeah. I think uh, when you when you really look at the team that Kevin has, there, there's no, – no, don't take it the wrong way, Big Kev, but you got a <laughs> lot of holes, bro. You got acres in there. There's not work see, to do. Um, and I see Nicole's uh, – she's going to get a win. I mean, at least that's what we believe. I, we know we never know what happens on Sundays, but um, it looks like Nicole is on should win this game, so she should be uh, one and two. What do you think about Kevin's chances, Aflo? Yeah, I'm sorry, but Kev, I think you're going to lose this week as well. Uh, just looking at points uh, against, and something if you were to ask me who has the highest points against, I would have said Nicole right off the bat. Uh, she's actually second, three ten. Oh my poor boy, Juicy J is first with three hundred and thirty three points. Scored again. So Juicy J has had it rough, man, uh, with all those points scored against them. But Nicole, just as rough, 310, not that much better. But she does have 271 points for, which is more than myself and Paul. Uh, so, yeah, those, and those, I, are, those are two people that are up there. And I will say, though, uh, just looking from today's uh, Thursday night game where the Browns beat the Steelers, uh, Pat Fryermuth. Uh, didn't do that well for Nicole. So that was right now, right now, um, Waddle House, um, they're projected to win by a couple of points. But, hey, it's it's a tight end. Nicole got six points. Uh, Could have been better, but Friar Moon has been pretty solid. So I, I think Nicole, even though the projection is favoring slightly on Kevin's side, Nicole's got this one in the bag. Yeah, and actually, Fryermuth had zero points going into, I believe, the fourth quarter. Uh, something crazy like that. So, Nicole scooped up some points at the very end there. Shout out to Mitch Trubisky for doing something right. But I agree with you, Victor. Like, let's put a bow on it. 
I think Nicole is going to take this and be one and two. And then all you got to do is stack those wins. And, mm -hmm. and that's the only way to get out of those holes. Uh, Tua and Waddle, can they cancel out? Maybe they can. Uh, but I think in the end, Waddle is not going to do enough to beat the likes of Gabe Davis and Pittman if he plays, which we still don't know yet. So, Nicole, myself, and Victor have you in this game. We'll see how that pans out. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to the rankings. And again, we're going to do it in the same fashion as last week. We're going to do top five, bottom three. Everybody else in the middle, you do better, do worse, and you'll get in the rankings. But until you're better or worse, we're not going to hear about you. We'll just give you uh, the game predictions and things like that. Number 12. Now, this could have gone either way. And I thought about this long and hard. I did. I think I thought about number 12 longer than I thought about number one. Uh, but I am moving the previous number 12 up in the rankings, and I'm lowering Cristian Hugo Fajardo down to number 12. 87 points scored. Not good enough with the two flex options, man. 87 points scored last year was low, and that was with defensive giving negative points and only one flex spot. 87 points scored in a two flex lead. That is unacceptable, and that is why I had to move him down one spot. Victor, what are your thoughts on where he stands in his team? Man, he just he just can't figure out the tight end. He drafted Kittle. He That's Kittle awesome. hasn't played. He goes with Irv Smith. Irv <laughs> Smith doesn't get him anything. Then he goes with Albert O. Then he gets zero. Albert so O, we get it. Albert O, we uh, exactly know it was a, zero. a big fucking O for Hardo. And but then he's now yeah he talks and, about him going Conklin. There's oh an O in God. Conklin. There's an O in Conklin right in the middle. So there might well, be another zero, Vic. The, the the last report came out that George Kittle was a full participant, but with Kittle, you don't necessarily know the guy. He's a great tight end, maybe not the best fantasy tight end because. He's, he's a, a great overall football player, but uh, sometimes it's a hit or miss with Kittle. So I, I don't know if even Kittle can help him out um, this week. But the, the one other big thing with Fajardo, it has to be Derrick Henry. He got drafted as a guy that could put similar numbers like he did at the beginning of last year before he got hurt. We haven't seen that yet. He has a favorable matchup uh, this week against the Raiders. If he can't figure it out against the Raiders, I don't, I don't know. I think King Henry might be dead by then. Yeah, man. And I think he has something good that could be brewing. If Derrick Henry plays like Derrick Henry, if Connor comes back from that ankle and plays like he did the first game and all of last year, even though the touchdowns probably regress, and James Robinson is looking better than he looked before the Achilles, man. It's crazy. He has pressure mm -hmm. off him because of ETN. He's in a better offense. I, I've messed up trading him. I, I listened to all that Achilles stuff in my ear, and I and right. and I traded him. So if he has one, two, three right there, RB, 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 and they're both playing to their full potential, that's how he's going to get out of the cellar. He just has to make the right moves and get players with upside, like Elijah Moore, not trade him away. Yeah, and I, honestly, I thought he was going to, you know, who, who's this guy, Damian, uh, Damian Williams, he was going to pick him off waivers because – you know, James Conner is a little Blank. bit banged up. He's a yep. little bit banged up. He didn't do that. Those are the moves that Fajardo has to be making. Like, he needs to work the waivers in order for him to just get a win. You know, at this point, it's not even think about, I'm not going to make the playoffs. Just get a win and start tacking on some some positive uh, – um, start putting some uh, positive outputs so you can get back in, in contention to even be in that conversation. And right now, he – you know, sadly, he does have the worst team in the league. Agreed. Uh, agreed. And that's why, Fajardo, you are number 12. Moving on together. to number 11, it is our good friend, Juicy. Jay, we really wanted to have him as a guest today. Couldn't, uh, couldn't get it done. He'll be the guest next week. Uh, we're really excited to have you, Juicy Jay. Hope to get you on next week. Victor, why do we have Juicy Jay, who scored 114 points and moved up to number 11 at that spot this week? I think uh, Juicy has, has made progress. I think the biggest the thing for him is, you know, he has, uh, you know, Derek Carr as, as his quarterback. Um, 
he he's trending in the right direction. Um, he to, at least for me, Derek Carr is like a low end QB one, uh, high end QB two. You don't need too much from Derek Carr. The the one the one situation that I look at Juice's team is figuring out Ezekiel Elliott and and Paul. Rough situation. Yeah, rough because because it's it to me it's kind of like. Zeke and Pollard are starting to go in, get into that flirtatious conversation, similar to Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb. Where I was gonna I, I, that you up. feel you feel like you got to play both of them. It sucks that you have to play both of them because one can really stink it up, and the other one can do really well. They yeah. both could do well, or they both could be terrible. So it's just yeah, it's a very tough situation. But um, I understand why. Um, Juicy trader for Pollard because he sees uh, maybe Pollard does have a role here, especially now that Dak is out. Maybe Cooper Rush has to rely more on the running, uh, use Pollard out of the backfield. I think that um, is kind of where Juicy's heading, which is why he's heading in the right direction. Um, and then his his tight ends, he's got a, got a good mix of tight ends, and uh, we'll see what he does there. Yeah, he actually played a two tight end set. I didn't even notice that until I looked two at tight end set. I'm telling you, yeah. it's a thing. Um, it's a thing, and they, it turned out to work for him because, uh, yeah, Ertz and Everett both scored over 10 points, and they ran a lot of routes for the respective teams. Now, Gerald Everett, he's kind of filling a void there with Keenan Allen out, but I mm-hmm. think Ertz has a mainstay in that Cardinals offense, and that was uh, when he when he traded for Ertz, especially for Waller, I was like, uh, I don't know about that. But if Ertz continues to run the amount of routes that he's running, which might fluctuate when like a Hopkins and a Rondale Moore come back, that mm-hmm. is going to be a top five fantasy tight end if he can stay healthy. So interesting what he, to see what he does with those two tight ends. I would write it out, see, get some more data on both of them, see how they're right. doing when some players come back, pick a tight end and maybe flip the other one because that tight end market is hurting. Someone like Christian Fajardo can use a tight end for sure. And those two <laughs> tight ends that he has are definitely going to score more than zero points on any given week. Thank right. you for that, Victor. That is good stuff. We are going to move on to numero 10, and that is going to be the reigning champ. But the 0-2 reigning champ, Augustine Prado. 92 points scored, and you enter the bottom three, the seller, for the first time this year. Why? Will Kyle Pitts turn around? What's going Man, on with Kyle Pitts, Victor? I don't know what all he needs to do. Maybe he has to get a flight to Atlanta. Go has to talk to <laughs> Arthur Smith. He needs to get on a plane and go talk to Kyle Pitts. Man, Drake Kyle London. Pitts. Drake London has been feasting, and I'm loving it. But I understand Kyle Pitts has to get going. I think Atlanta knows that. The rest of the NFL knows that he's eventually going to get going because – Right now, it's a one-man show, really, if you really think about it. They're just using Drake London, and they're – All day. D- Kyle Pitts is non-existent. I understand Kyle Pitts might not be an overall great tight end, but for fantasy purposes, he's a great tight end, but he's not being used. Should and, be. and so should if, be. if the Falcons want to win games, they got to use their weapon, which is Kyle Pitts. So it starts there. Hopefully, I think this will be the week where everybody realizes, okay, we need to get – we got to find ways to get Pitts involved because um, we, we got to win some games here. Definitely, Victor. I agree with you there. And then the other thing to look out for with our reigning champ is the whole Charger stack. So mm-hmm. he's got Justin Herbert and Keenan Allen. I love that stack, but are they healthy? It, it's one of those things, you know, from a lot of reports that have come out, several players in the past have had, um, you know, had a rib – a rib injury. Uh, the one thing that always tends to happen is that, especially as a quarterback, when you're throwing, it causes a lot of pain. Um, and that's not, that's not even the factor of you're getting hit or you're getting pressured by a defensive end or, or the defense. So, so I think for him, it's kind of re- really figuring out whether if Justin Herbert is healthy enough, if not, he needs to go pick somebody up. Um, and you're going to have to see this this week to really see if he can really play or, and how much it's going to affect, especially not having a healthy Keenan Allen. How is that going to look? So um, at, right now it's a wait and see with Justin Herbert, but I think he's got full go for this week. Yeah, for him, I'm worried that by the time Kyle Pitts turns it around and Justin Herbert and Keenan Allen are fully back from 
uh, whatever ails them, it might be too late, especially right. starting with 0 and 2. So we'll see if he starts making moves because he's one of those that really only make moves when uh, the right one presents itself. So uh, let's move on to Prada Bowl predictions. Everybody loves a good Prada Bowl. Who's winning it, Julio or Augie? Man, it's just like you got to pick between – the bad and the worst, man. It's just, it just, it's. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, gosh, that's what. What do you think? I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you take the lead on this one. Yeah, I mean, Juicy has two of his <laughs> flex spots empty, so uh, I don't know who exactly he's planning on playing there. He sat Claypool, which was good. He only scored seven points today. Boswell only scored four, and Miles Jacks put a respectable twelve for Augustine. Um, so we'll see who comes out on top of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you there. It's pre- it's going to be pretty even. Uh, I'm probably going to lean towards Augustine. Uh, I think Julio was right. The Miles Sanders and Tyler Lockett uh, trade really helped him out in how his lineup looks today. Right. So I think that Tyler Lockett and Miles Sanders might be enough to push him over the edge. Juicy has been giving David grief about that for good reason, it looks like, because just looking at a Looking at it from afar, if his other options other than that were Lazard and Edmonds, and if he had to play mm-hmm. those two, I might have gone uh, Juicy J, but instead I'm going to go Augie. Yeah, I think the one to I, – I agree with you. I think Augie's is the 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 guy the, the team that's going to win here. But uh, the one thing – yeah, uh, the one thing I do see about um, Juicy's team is Leonard Fournette. I think yeah. Tampa Bay is starting to become more of a run first offense. They understand that yeah. Tom Brady doesn't have enough time in the pocket to, you know, one, he doesn't really have any weapons. Godwin's out. Julio Jones is out. Mike Evans on the suspension. So I think we could expect a big game from Leonard Fournette based on the fact that the O line is can't protect Tom Brady right now. They'll probably figure it out because it's Tom Brady, but I, and the Fournette hasn't had any touchdowns. Uh, really to show for his work uh, through the first two games. So I, I can expect a big game probably coming out of Fournette um, this week. So maybe that will help out Juicy and it evens out a little bit between both rosters uh, heading into week three. Yeah, uh, Fournette's target, uh, or I should say touch share is crazy. Uh, he is due for touchdowns and he's due for touchdowns very soon. We'll see mm-hmm. if that's this week. So we just did the bottom three RIP Now it's time to do the top five, top five, top five. Started with number five, and I don't like to boast, but I had to put myself in there at number five, Victor. I'm 2 and Rigged. I scored 156 points, and I entered the top five for the first time this year. Victor, is that the right place for me, or did I rank myself a little too high on here? I think based on the fact that, like you mentioned, um, you're 2 and 0 you're 1 in 56. Read that damn book as I talk right now. Um, I think, yeah, you, you do deserve to break in the top five. I think uh, I think you're going to come back to reality once you play me this week. You're going to realize, oh, man, I'm not that good. But, hey, you do got some pieces. You got Aaron Jones, Austin Eckler. Austin Eckler, to me, is the big question mark for you. Man, but speaking of, we were talking about Justin Herbert, I think, with Austin Eckler, he could have a bigger usage, especially if, if uh, Justin Herbert is not too healthy. They're going to just want to dump it off uh, to the back to use Austin Eckler more, get him more involved, see if they can re- uh, release some of the pressure on Justin Herbert. So you could have a big game this week from uh, Eckler. Um, in terms of rookie strategy, I, I think you're, you're taking the Augie approach from last year. <laughs> Take something into not a hit. Lie. You know? Not going to lie. I actually drew inspiration from Moggy. I went into the draft thinking, I need to find Waddle and Chase, and I need to make sure they're on my team. What's the best way to do that? It's to monopolize as many of the young wide receivers as I could. I missed out on London by one pick, mm-hmm. and that was your pick. And I know exactly where you were standing when you made that pick. You were right by my trash can. And I said, no, oh, there's no way this guy's going to pick London right now. And he picked him. And I was, I've was i been thinking about it ever since. And now that he's playing well, I'm like, I would have had London. And when Augie dropped Garrett Wilson, I was like, I should put more than I did for Garrett Wilson. I only put $9. I was, like, I gotta, I was about to put 15 but I was like, pace myself with the with the fab. So that was my wait, rookie strategy. Wait, you only put 
Garrett Wilson before wow. week one, Augie dropped them. Uh, that's gonna be that's gonna be interesting. What a bargain. We'll see how that plays out. We'll see how that plays out because I think Augie picked up Waddle for cheap. I don't know that he draft. I know he drafted Chase. I'm not sure if he drafted yeah. Waddle. I think he picked them up, and that ended up being huge to his championship right. run. So I drew. I drew. You know, imitation is flattery. I you you really him. think you really think Garrett Wilson is going to be can have a better fantasy year over Drake has, London? Well, th- that remains to be seen. I think London is the better talent in the better situation. But target share, if we're talking target mm-hmm. share, okay, he is getting – Garrett Wilson's getting the target share that Diggs and St. Brown and uh, Hill and all Son of God. top tier. All of those top tier wide receivers are getting as a rookie. So if Josh uh, Zach Wilson's even an inkling of a upgrade to Joe Flacco, I think he's going to the moon. And my other one, Traylon Burks, don't forget about him. He is the most efficient wide receiver per target and route run. If he starts getting more targets and that efficiency stays, watch out for that one too. So we'll see if my rookie okay. strategy pays off. Um, we saw Mr. Pickens with that catch that he made. The Odell Beckham Man. comparisons were flying in. His, he got seven targets. He's on waivers. We'll see if someone swoops him up. I don't have room on my team for him anymore, but maybe. No, I think David has him. Out of that. I oh, think David, David has him. Yeah, I think David has him. So I think how many oh, points? He, yeah, he yeah. got six points. He almost got seven. He was a yard away, but he did get seven targets. That was the, yeah, he was, I was going to pick him up before the game, but then I was like, eh. But I mean, still, until that quarterback changes Trubisky right and that's why I dropped him if 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 I had any um say in it Kenny Pickett would be in there and that would probably boost Friermuth and it would boost uh Pickens Deontay Johnson and Claypool what a waste of wide receivers man what a waste all right going on to number four and that is the one and only Trader Joe Mixon. And that, I guess that's why they call him Trader Joe, man. That guy has six trades. He's one and one, 135 points scored last week, but he falls two spots because he lost against the highest scorer of the week. Tough draw, Hector. Uh, why is he number four, Vic? Uh, I think, you know, first of all, David is probably not going to be happy. He's like, I deserve to be higher than – then the next few people that are going to be on the It'll list, win. but but win to go up. hey, he he lost against uh, Hector, who you know he obviously is in the top five. We don't know where exactly yet, but um, David, I think uh, he should sh- should be happy. I like where his team is at. Obviously, he I still ca- I cannot look at him in the face because <laughs> he has Jalen Hurts, but. Hey, that was my mistake. That eagle stack, man. That but, Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown, that looks tight. Even though the, the, A.J. Brown only got thing, 10 points. The one so thing I'll say good. is, like, I think he finally realized that that eagle stack is not as great as he probably thought because he relies too much on it. Um, yeah. And he probably saw that on Monday night against the Vikings where uh, Miles Sanders, I believe, only had 11 points. Um, Which is good so, for Miles Sanders. He'll take well, that. It, it's good, but he said if I can – maybe get like he did with AJ Dillon, get something in return, something more diversified, diversified yeah. exactly. But I think uh him having Jalen Hurts with AJ Brown helps them out a lot. The one thing, you know, and, and I'm sure you have a thought about this, but uh, Alvin Kamara and Chris Godwin, they just need to be he- if they're healthy, David yeah. could go ahead and just win this league by a, a landslide. That's a that's a different team with those two healthy. And I traded Godwin, not because I didn't believe in his abilities, because when he's healthy, he's one of the best PPR wide receivers mm-hmm. out there. Uh, I traded him because I needed my wins now, and I didn't think I was going to win week two, which I ended up doing. So uh, do I regret it? No. I, I'm still chips in, win now, stack the wins now that they're coming, and give me some leeway to kind of make mistakes and still make the playoffs. And once you're in the playoffs, anything can happen. But for David, if Godwin and Kamara comes back and he could tread water until they come back, he might just take off. Uh, so that's what we're looking at with David. He is playing Christian Fajardo, number 12, four versus 12 matchup. When? If this was March Madness, when? there could be an upset. Do you have an upset? Actually, actually, let, let's, let, let me look at, let me look at this, this damn team, Fajardo's team. 
Uh, you know, because I, I do see the possibility for Hardo has has this. I don't know. Sometimes he just gets really lucky with things right now. He does. Um, Trader Joe, Trader Joe that. Mixon, Trader Joe Mixon right now is expected to beat him by ten points, one thirty nine, actually thirteen points, one thirty nine to one twenty six. Um, but a lot of things can sway. I think the biggest question mark for De- for uh, for Hardo is Derrick Henry. If Derrick Henry can outperform the projection amount of points that he is projected to get this week against the Raiders, there, there, there's a lot of possibilities in Fajardo's team that has his team has the talent to be able to upset David just on that running back room alone. And assuming Joe Burrow can actually play better now, um, they need to figure out that offense. That O line has been atrocious uh, protecting Joe Burrow. They got the weapons, so he he's he's got the pieces to beat. Uh, David, but it's one of those things. Is David's team just a little bit better right now than where Fajardo's at? And I, I got my money on on uh, on David. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to go with David. I'm not going to pick the upset here, but I think it might be a little closer than people think. Uh, particularly, two things. One, I just realized George Kittle plays on Sunday Night Football. So if he's a questionable tag all the way up until kickoff, is Fajardo going to risk that and not have a tight end to play, or is he going to put in Conklin just to be sure? Right. I guess we got to we got to watch the new, with the injury news on that and kind of see what he does with that. Um, and then the other thing is he has C.D. Lamb on Monday night, and I know he hasn't been lighting the world on fire with Cooper Rush as quarterback, but man, if it's a close game and it comes down to Monday night miracle and it's C.D. Lamb versus mm-hmm. David at the end, that's going to be fun to watch. So I'm kind of hoping that it's a close game and it comes down to CeeDee Lamb either shitting the bed or going off for the first time all year. And whichever happens is who wins the game. Uh, But let's say it does come down to that. I don't see Cooper Rush being able to feed the ball to CeeDee Lamb the way that Fajardo will need him to. And I'm going to give that slight edge to David this week. So good luck to both you boys. Love it all my heart. Both the teams are not to a no, though. So, sorry. Moving on to number three, the fall from grace. The once proud number one. I thought uh, he might not lose a game in, in three, four weeks. I thought this guy is here to stay at number one. He's going to sit in the throne and get comfortable. But he did not have time to get comfortable Victor, tell us why Byron, who's one and one with 124 points scored last week, falls two spots in this week's ranking. That's what this guy does a lot. He yaps and yaps and yaps. And you know what? God, God bless Nicole Soul for having to put up with a man like this. But, man, he really thought he could beat me. And, 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 I, and I honestly, I, started like, I, was like, I, was, I was like, man, can Byron beat me? I was like. But then I started to see how they started playing out with Jonathan Taylor. He looked like he looked like shit. The rest of his team was not performing. I was like, oh my, um, I can't. Um, I think I'm gonna beat him. But it's one of those things with Byron, like hypes his own team so much, and he values his players so high that he cannot see anything else. And uh, you know, what? I'm that's my problem too. Sometimes that I overvalue <laughs> my players. But I think for him, it's like for him, it's like I'm careful that you guys played. For for him, it's it's like I have the best team, and he said it last week. He said, "Oh, I'm gonna beat him. It's not even gonna be a problem." And look, now he sits one and one, and yeah. who's above him? It, it I, clearly I'm above him in the rankings. So. <laughs> well, and we'll get to that. We'll get to yeah, that. But, but yeah, with Byron, Kirk, and Sutton, Kirk two touchdowns. Man, he looks great in that offense. Sutton, Sutton as well. He looks like a hit. But are you worried about DJ Moore and uh, Patterson not uh, following up his week one 22-point performance with another performance quite like that? And only I think he got four points last week. Are you worried about that at all? Yeah, look, um, I don't even think this pod has a name, but this is some inside knowledge that you're getting, up-to-date, like, information. So earlier, early, earlier today – um, Fajardo, I mean, Byron and I were talking about making a trade. I was going to give him Juju and I was going to give him Kareem Hunt for DJ Moore. I thought about it and I was like, 
Yeah, DJ Moore has a big. I would have done that trade, man. That that's what you know. I was I was going back and forth, but the thing with me and Byron is that he still overvalues his player. It's week three. Yeah. We know who you, who DJ Moore is in that offense. Baker is not that great of a quarterback, and he can't get the ball to McCaffrey. So what makes you think he's going to be able to get it to DJ Moore consistently? DJ Moore in his last, I believe, three seasons, he's made he's. Uh, he's racked up over a thousand yards in each season. So he is a great talent, but to me, it's like, I'll be giving up Juju and Kareem Hunt is the bonus because Juju and DJ, DJ Moore based on their offenses, based on their, where they were drafted and how they're performing, they're kind of similar, but I'm losing a lot, losing Hunt, especially if Chubb goes down, then I'm, I'm fucked. So I didn't do the trade, but DJ Moore to me, it's like, it, it's tough to really evaluate him with Baker. We know what his talent is. If he had a top tier quarterback, man, this guy would be easily probably a top 10 uh, wide receiver. No problem. He's got the talent. Patterson for me, it's just, it's not moving the needle anymore. I don't, I don't think uh, the Falcons see that in him. They have Drake London. They have Kyle Pitts. We hope he gets going in the rookie Algier. I think they want to get him more involved. So I think Patterson is going to fade towards the end of the uh, – as the weeks go on. I think he's still going to have a role. But if, I, if I'm if uh, i Byron, I need to figure out who's going to be my RB2 because right now uh, it's not looking great aside from him having Jonathan Taylor. Yeah. Well, I hope it works out better for you this week saying no to that trade, Victor, than it did for me last week because this is some more breaking news and you're going to cringe a little bit when I say this one. But I had my thumb over the accept button when Paul sent Amari Cooper for Rashad Penny. And I was about to do it. I had my thumb there. And this was before I got Michael Carter. And I was like, my RB death would be just gone. And I didn't do it because I was thinking about the RB death. And Cooper was coming off a two-point game. Uh, And it's very similar with Moore. He he started off slow, but it only takes one 20-point game. And him stacking those games for his value to just go whoop. So yeah. hopefully it works out better for you than it did for me. Fuck you, Paul. You're so lucky I didn't press accept. But let's go ahead and get into the predictions. This is a really cool game. It's Byron versus Brian. Uh, two people that I would say are adversaries to a lot of other people because of how smart we look at them. You know, like Brian makes some really good moves, even though he doesn't put all his attention <laughs> into fantasy sometimes, but he makes shrewd moves. And Byron, I think everybody in terms of sports knowledge would say he's he's up there with sports knowledge. So who do you have winning Byron versus Ooh, Brian? Man, this is this is I think closer than I thought, but I probably have to say it's gonna be a, a, a pretty close um game. But hey, I I love you Brian, but Byron's team, he's got Jonathan Taylor, he's got Patrick Mahomes, and he's got Travis Kelsey. Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey had a tough game against on a short week against the Chargers. I don't see them being able to, you know, who they're playing this week, Indianapolis. The Chiefs are going to, they're going to eat. Patrick Mahomes is going to have a great game. I know that cancels out having Lamar Jackson, but overall, again, to me, it's who has the better players. And what does the track record show? And I think Byron's team is going to have it. I don't, I don't, to me, if it was up to me, Clyde Edwards or Lair, I would sell that guy right now because he's not, he, it's, it's too hard to I'll predict. Ta- I'll take him. I would take yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you don't know who's going to, who's going to get the red zone touches really because yeah, it's, it's hard. Andrew Reed. It's hard to really predict. Last week it was him. You don't know if that's going to be him this week. So I think uh, Byron takes the one, take this one and goes uh, up two and one. Uh, for the season. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and agree with you. I think uh, Bri- Bri- Byron, sorry, BBB, uh, Byron is going to take this one. I think that uh, the Kansas City stack is going to go off. It, it didn't even go off last week. I think that's why he lost. But I think in every right. week that it does go off, he will win. And I think Indy is looking really bad. They play in a dome. It's going to be perfect conditions for them just to go off. Uh, I think that's going to do wonders for him. We'll see about Patterson. Um, 
for sure. And in general, I just think he has the better players at each spot. So I don't really like Brian starting DJ Chark. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how to set your lineup, Brian, but he, he, who knows? He may go off for 30. I'm just saying and when you line them up uh, player for player, I think Chark is the weakest player out of everybody there. Uh, Najee Harris also, that was a really bad beat. He had 14 points and fumbled on the last play of the game. So that's minus two for Brian. That's bad omen and starting off on the wrong foot with 12 points instead of 14. Lamar Jackson also was spotted with an arm sleeve on his arm. He's going to do fine, I'm sure, but just something to keep in mind. Uh, all that points me to picking Byron. Uh, and if Byron does win, look for him to either make a jump in the rankings or stay where he is at number three. Good stuff, Victor. Now we're going to move on to your favorite manager. No, that it's is... not It's not my favorite manager because I don't deserve this. You I do, don't deserve do. this. I thought about this a lot. I thought about this a lot. And the reason I have you at number two isn't because I think you have the second best team. It's because you were number four last week and Hector was – number three last week. And for the highest score of last week to get jumped, when they're both two and those, I just couldn't do it. That's why, Victor, you come in at number two, 156 points scored, and you move up two spots from the previous week. Hey, man, you have to be in a good spot to be complaining about being top two. So tell nah, me why I, you're there. Uh, you know, you know, all jokes aside, I don't fucking care about the rankings as long as I'm <laughs> winning. As long as I make the playoffs, that's all I care about. But, hey, my team is doing good. Hey, aside from my Jalen Hurts debacle and not really analyzing what I was losing, hey, I got two wide receiver ones right now that I'm extremely happy about. I have Justin Jefferson and Amon St. Brown. I don't, I don't know. Read that damn book. And when I when I see you, when I go grab that book and I'm gonna fucking burn it. I'm gonna buy you a fucking jersey of of the sun god. Because he is gonna right. he's gonna just demolish. Hey man, he's gonna people kill are saying, it. People are saying he's a league winner. You might have mm-hmm. another league winner on your hands. Back to back years. Last year was Johnson Taylor. This year could be St. Brown. He's looking great, man. Congratulations on hitting he, on him. You know what that says about me though? That I know how to I know how to scout talent. All I can right. see. I can All see right. through. I have ears and eyes everywhere. Yeah, I got except, people. Except, except for just, except in Philly. I don't I don't uh, I was gonna say except that quarterback, because currently your quarterbacks are Russell Wilson, Jared Goff, and Kirk Cousins. How do you feel about those three? Oh great. They're all great options. You look at Russell Wilson, fat boy in Seattle, killed it. He came back. Hey, he's he's learning how to play with the clown ass head coach as Hackett. <laughs> Hackett's he, a clown, he need, bro. He he needs to figure that out. I think he'll be fine. Just gotta give him a little bit of time. But golf and Kirk, I picked them up. I don't really know what the fuck I'm gonna do. I really don't. <laughs> I gotta because they play each other. So it's tough. I I'm gonna right. give Kirk the benefit of the doubt, but I at this point I'm just streaming quarterbacks until I hate on one. Don't um, but, overthink it, Victor. Don't overthink it. Shit, I was this close to trading today, and I was like, no. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Well, good luck with that, but not too much good luck. Let's move on to predictions. Game of the week, Vic versus A-Flow. And look, I think we both know what we're going to pick here. So go right. ahead and tell me why you're winning, and I'll tell you why I'm winning. Look, I, I look at your team. Hey, credit to you. I see your team, and I say, hey, you know what? a did it again. <laughs> he uh, he has a team that's capable of beating me. Obviously, Josh Allen is the big is the big uh, plus for you. Nick Chubb, right. hey, say what you want about Nick Chubb. He's had two 100-yard 100, 100, uh, games. He has four Nick touchdowns. Hey, he's been great. Kareem Hunt, I, you know, I'm going to take the highs with the lows. You know, week one, he had 22 points. The last two weeks, he's had eight points. I'm okay with that. I'm like, because there could be one week where he pops off. I'd rather him, you know, rather me play him and have that boom and bust scenario than, you know, just having my bench and he's, and he, and I lose because I only had, 
you know, he throws like 15 points or something and I lose the game because I didn't play him. I'll, I'll, I'll take it there, but I see your wide receivers and I think that's where I have a, a superior edge. And I think, that's you know, that. that's my yeah. and, and I think you realize like, especially right now leaving, obviously I want to win, you want to win, but you know, it's, it's going to be tough for you to overcome Justin Jefferson and um, I'm Ross St. Brown because the Vikings play the Lions. The Lions have not been a great uh, defense, and the Vikings did not show that to be that great um, on Monday night. So on defense, so I think it it could help me out in both aspects. Because that's a game I'm obviously going to be watching um, very uh, closely to see what happens. So it's going to be a fun game for me to watch because it's going to be on both offenses. So. Uh, I think that's going to be if if one of them struggles, then I'm in trouble because then that leaves me uh, pretty wide open for you to take the uh, take the lead and probably uh, beat me. Where the fuck you this get is, that book? Where did you get that book? Is why I'm winning this week. The art of war. If you know where you're going and where you've been, you have the advantage in combat. Sun Tzu. I was down 25 points after Thursday night football last week to Nicole. People wrote me off. Did I panic? No. Once again, I find myself in that same position. I am down 25 points, but I'm standing before you today saying, I've been here before and I've won. So I will win again. Look, I have no book my, in front of <laughs> My oh, advantage. No, let, let me finish this. This is where I'm going to win. Eckler is going to bounce back against Jacksonville. He's going to be the Eckler of old. He's going to get his first touchdown. Josh Allen is going to be in a shootout with Tua in Miami, and he's going to hold the up water. Garrett Wilson is going to continue his breakout as well as Bateman. And Dallas Goddard is going to score his first touchdown as well. And we're finally going to see a breakout from DK Metcalf. Those are the main things that I guarantee are going to happen, and that's why I'm going to eke out a four point victory against you. Look, I don't, you know what? I'm at Lupus place. I'm not at my place, but I have, I have no books here. Brian, I do fucking read, by the way, you think I don't read. I fucking read, but I have this for you. Can you see this? What is it? Say, when Let's witches go. go riding and black cats are seen, the moon laughs and whispers <laughs> tis near Halloween. That's all I fucking wow. wow. That's amazing, bro. You know, it's about to get real scary for you. So it's perfect because I'm about to win. We'll see. I can't wait. I can't wait to see who wins that game. Game of the week. We'll see who wins. And now moving on to the last but not least, of course, because you're number one. Hector Primetime Mendoza standing at 2-0. and Highest score of the year, 173 points scored last week. Highest score of the year thus far, I should say. And then up two spots from last week. So you see the fruits of the zero RB build paying off. Victor, what do you think? You know, hey, I got. I wish I could be first. Um, and I've always said it. Hector does have a good team, but he needs to figure out his running back situation. Yep. And and he uh, to me at least to me what I'm seeing is he's not really streaming any uh, any running backs just trying to work the waivers he does hey he does have Mostert he has Josh Jacobs and he has Antonio Gibson I mean I'm just I'm I'm just trying to help you out Hector I want to face the best competition and I want you at your <laughs> best by the time I face you if I was you I would trade for Brian Robinson. What are you doing right now? Well, that's that's not a bad idea. That, uh, because Gibson's production will go down. And Moster is a good pickup though. Moster is, is beating Edmonds, but um he got, him, I like, he got Moster before the hype right. too, so he didn't have to pay any five. Right. So I think his team is good where it's at, but just just tread lightly with your running backs because I know you're gonna need help if you're trying to make it um, to the championship game this year. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I have the zero wide receiver build. Hector has the zero RB build. So far, he's winning. He is in the number one spot. But down the line, once those RBs start becoming more consistent, it's going mm -hmm. to be interesting to see if everything regresses to the mean. 
So let's move on with the predictions for the number one spot. Is he going to stay? Is he going to hold it? Do you see any way Hector loses to Paul? Hector versus Paul predictions. Victor. Man, just because I want to be first. I, I said I don't care about being first on the power rankings, but I, I kind of do. I'm I'm just I'm just gonna be rooting for Paul. Uh, you know he had you know he got 23 points from Amari Cooper. He's off to a really great start. start. It's a great a great too. start, and he is expect. I mean, shit. Hector's expected to be the 136 to 120. So he yeah. still has he still has a a, a huge lead on him uh, projection wise. But hey, I, hey, I, I like Paul. Come on, Paul. You have no deck. <laughs> Help me out here. I want. I want to be. <laughs> I want to be a flow, and you want to be Hector. Let's do it. Let's beat the only two and O teams with no quarterback. Three and O. Three and O. And uh, oh, yeah, yeah, three and O. That's a. Uh, that's. Uh, I'm gonna have to rock with Hector on this one. I think he re- retains the spot. Uh, Mariota versus Seattle. I think he's gonna score more than Mariota did versus the Rams. Uh, I think he has a safe floor with his rushing yards that he's gonna against against get against my Seahawks. Uh, I'm not worried about Hector's RBs yet, but I will be worried about Hector's RBs in, let's say, three, four, three, four weeks when mm-hmm. Robinson is back. Um, Hector, three wide receivers is going to be enough to beat an injured Paul. This is not Paul's full strength team. Schultz needs to be healthy, and Dak has to be throwing to him. Uh, Carson Wentz has been a good fill-in for Dak, so I'm not too worried about him missing Dak, but Dak being gone really affects uh, Schultz and Judy being not sure with the ribs also is worrying to me, especially with him playing at Sunday night. Uh, it was a good start for Cooper, but not so great for Minka Fitzpatrick. I really would like to have seen him score more points, and then mm-hmm. it would have moved the needles for me, but that 27 doesn't look as intimidating when you know it came from two players versus one. So and and you, have and you said it, Hector. And- yeah, and you said it. You know, it's those three big – his big three, Jamar Chase, Stephon Diggs, and Tyreek Hill. Those but Tyreek Hill, has a, Tyreek Hill has a tough match Bills. against the Buffalo. Bills. I understand they had Jalen Waddle, J- Waddle, and I know there's more weapons in that uh, Miami offense, but there could be a possibility that, you know, Buffalo zeroes in on maybe Tyreek and leaves leave somebody else open, but it's going to be tough. It's going to – there's just a possibility, though, that Tyreek gets uh, gets slowed down a little bit this week. Yep, and we will see. I can't wait for that one either. Uh, well, it's getting late, Victor. Any parting words for us? Man, I just I just hope Monday, Tuesday morning when you wake up, <laughs> you know, you realize that I'm going to be three and zero, baby. That's all that matters. We will see the art of war is upon us let's go to battle good luck my friend victor as always thank you for joining me shout out to everybody watching and listening we will see you all next week thank you football for bringing us together and remember never give up on a non-zero chance peace